Hello everybody, good buddy Hugh here with another vlog. Y'all thought this was a good idea to do, so I thought, okay, I'll do it. Surprise. I'm not in a dress today, I'm in shorts. Cause it's not as hot as it used to be. I don't know, we had a heat wave, and then it went down. So, um, first thing I'm gonna do, people did ask me questions, so I'm gonna answer those first, and then I'm just gonna talk about whatever. Sounds like a plan. Ugh, you joke. So, first one was from Geeky Mac V K, I guess. It was like, I really want you to do more of this. Here's some questions. How did you find out about Hitalia? My friends, like, really liked it. And they're like, hey, you should be England. And I'm like, okay. Like, I did not know Hitalia at all, like, until like three weeks later, where I actually finally got a chance to do it. Because it was really unknown. Like, the Japanese was just coming out, like, the. When I got into it, the 8th episode just came out of season 1 in Japanese. So it was like 2008 or whatever. 2009. One of those. So I saw it and I was like, yes, I will be England. And then it just kind of went from there. Uh, When did you join the time? Uh, 2008, 2009. Around that area. How long does it take to create a hit to game? <laughs> Depends on the game. Because, like, first date took me two weeks. Dream Talia, I'm currently on f four and a half years, basically. It's, it's almost been five years. Next year's five years, I want to say. It's crazy. Yeah, so it depends how long the game is and how much resources and stuff you want to put into the game. It can last between a couple weeks to that. Yes. Uh, is there any band singers you've been listening to a lot lately? I don't know. I just kind of listen to other what other people listen to, and then I'm like, that's cool. And then I do that. Uh, how did- I like Nightwish. How did you come up with the name Kyokun? Well, my original name was terminated because copyright bullshit and hackers. So, because I posted AMVs. Not anymore. Mm -mm. But, uh, Kyokun is basically, you know, Kyokun. Like, K U N. I was like, I want to make it sound like that, but not that. So it's secretly weeb. So when you say it out loud, it's like raccoon, but coon as in the Japanese. Ha ha ha. I am so hilarious. And then 64 just came from Nintendo 64 because I fucking love that. They see it. <laughs> okay, next one. It's being dumb. Okay. Uh, is from Madison Martinez. Please do my vlogs, Miss Kyokun. I would love to see more of the outside of your gaming things, and I do like it when I see your face because you really are pretty. Thank you. Um, it reminds me that you're an actual person, not some disembodied voice I really like. Thank you. Uh, and as for questions, I'll put a few down for you to answer. Vlogs, okay. What, who do you consider your inspirations? Dignified's my inspiration. No, seriously, we make up so much shit together. Like, stories and ideas, and they're so smart. So they really are my muse. And especially if I just think of an idea, I'm like, Hey, what do you think about this? And they're like, that's cool. And I'm like, yeah. Uh, Lubo is too. We like to bounce ideas off of each other a lot for, like, uh, card verse, two-piece stuff, and just a lot of stuff. And it's, it's nice. Uh, how do you cope with stress? I eat. A lot. Which is not good but I do that. But I don't do it as much as I used to, which is good. Also, I um, I do paperwork. That's something I do to handle stress. I make paperwork of something, like cons or games, like planning out what's going to happen, what do I need for it, what comes next, because it takes my mind off of things and makes me think about the better things I could be doing, like working on Dream Talia and stuff. Uh, do you like to read books? And if so, what is your favorite? I don't like to read books. I don't even like to read fan fiction, which is ironic because let's read, but it's true. But my favorite book is probably Eyes of the Dragon by Stephen King. I used to read that like a lot in high school. Uh, what is your biggest fear? Being a failure, to be honest, of uh, parents to dig to a lot of things, which I'm- I am basically the embarrassment of the family, so... 
Ugh. Like, I, I have no positive traits to talk about in the family. Because I am... Socially... Not good. Because this job is bullshit to them. And stuff like that. And... My biggest, biggest is to be to dig. Because I fear constantly that I am nothing more than a mooch to them. Because they do a lot for me. And... Let's change the subject. Um, that's actually the last question. So let's let's get far away from that before I start crying, because that's never good. You're so adorable from Selma Hiskin. Thank you. Uh, yeah, can you do a video of voicing all the accents you can do? It'll be fun to see all the quirks you do. That's why Hitta Games are for, <laughs> because I'm not good at a lot of accents, but <laughs> I knew some of them. I, I'm still working on it. It's a process. Like, Germany took me three years to be good at, so... Hmm. Your first experience at a con and being on a panel, and tips for beginners new to a con. Um, my first experience was, uh... My first ever con was Anime Expo, in, when it was still Anaheim. And I was in really shitty cosplay. Like, it was a cause of cosplay. I never heard of wigs, I never heard of accessories. I was uh, cosplaying Yami Merrick. It was so bad. But I got the most attention there that I ever did for the next five cons. I got a lot of photos. I was treated so nice. I think I was like 13. Which is like 10 years ago. Wow. Um, sorry. But, yeah. So, be nice. Have faith. Be optimistic. Because we had no plan. We just fucking went in there. It was still fun. My first uh, panel was at Torcon in Rochester, New York. That was a lot of fun. Like, we didn't have a lot of stuff to go on beforehand, but it was really fun. And my friend Jackie was there. It was, it was great. I got to be Russia. It was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, tips to beginners new con. Eat. Drink. Um, have schedules out beforehand. Not schedules, but um, maybe know what you're doing. Know what you're packing. Um, think of the inevitable. Like, think of always a backup, because things can always go wrong. So plan Bs are nice. Uh, how to do cosplays and how you prepare or choose one. Mostly I'm just like, hey, I want to be that. And then I'm like, okay. And also think about, like, what would I do as said character? Because seeing it being aesthetically pleasing is one thing, but I want to have something to do with them. Because I'm not really as much of a person to just be in a costume and have nothing to do. I've tried that before for years, and I had so much not that much fun. So then I just decided, okay, if I'm going to be in it, I'm going to be in a group. Or, more specifically, I'm going to be in a cos co couple cosplay. And that's what we do. We usually just like, okay, how can we couple this? How can we ship this? And then we go. My current projects are Sweden. He's almost done. Finland needs pants. Finland needs to get his... Not Finland. Uh, Sweden get, needs to get his coat done. And Neo-Russia. Because I want to be Neo-Russia with Diggs America. And just be so cute. And just like... Mm. Um, would you ever play a fan-made official game, but from another anime? Yeah. Like, I thought about doing a- I saw a bunch of, like, RPG Maker Danganronpa games, but then I got busy, because of things. So, it is, yes, just Hitali is more prevalent out there. Like, if I find something I'm interested in, I could do it. Yes. Ay -ay 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 -ay. Next one, the imaginary th thing. Can you guys talk about some of the stuff you've been working on for Dreamtalia or the Hitta Guild? as a whole, have been working on. Thanks. Dream Tally has been going through a lot of progress stuff. Like, I've been going- I've been doing streams for, like, 12 hours a day working on Dream Talia, Like, fixing some of the bugs for later on. We're getting new face sets in, so we're putting those in for later on. Um, new art's a thing, new- Godly, everything's a thing. Uh, working on new battlers, new stuff. So Dream is getting a lot of redunning stuff to it, which is really nice. Because I'm really hoping that we can not hit another hiatus and just go right into it. Be nice. Um, the Hitta Guild, uh, Bluebell's working on Chapter Zero some more, and also is really close to getting Sleeping Bow done. I'm so fucking excited, oh my god. Um, Poochie's taking a break. Kitsuki's working hardcore on Angel Talia, so that's also a thing. I'm excited for that. I got to see a sneak peek of it, and I was like, ooh, loady. And Aisu has been working on home, and from what I can tell, they're having a bit of a writer's block, but 
They're... They got the feels I've heard. I'm excited. Why did I do that? I have no idea. Um... Yes, Mage is working on Chessverse. Dig is Dig, who is hard at working. Bless them. Though, um, we know when we're gonna get more time. We're gonna work on more Hitterella. Because I'm excited for Hitterella. Anyway, moving on. Um, blah, 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 blah. Just out of curiosity, who is your favorite character to cosplay? Germany. Uh, do you hand make your out costumes or do I buy them? I buy them. I can't sew to save my life. Like, Dig can. Dig's starting to learn to sew, so that's nice. Uh, I do, to, uh, to be honest, making a Pirate Spain costume and having an online bot store Romano currently. Maybe even plan to make my friend a Pirate Prussia. Nice. Um, where did you get your Romano tomato? People were asking about Romano tomato. I brought him over. And this is what he looks like, and he's got his curl right here. Normano tomato, ooh, ooh, on my head. Um, basically, he's actually like my sister's friend made him, cause she was also into Italian, so she made him as a gift for my sister. And my sister was moving out, and she didn't want him. And I was like, holy shit, I will take him. And so I did, and now he's mine. And he's a really comfy pillow. He's really fat. Like, look at him compared to me. He's really huge, but he's also really comfy. He's like. Fuck this. Out of the shot you go. Blah blah. Yes. Uh, da, da, da. Next one is from Hannah Noel. Uh, join the vlog. Something nice. Yeah, yeah. What's your favorite food? Ramen. I kid you not. Ramen's my favorite. Like top ramen. I know it's bad for me, but it's so tasty. Shit. Okay. I've gotten like 12 minutes, but. Let's see, now I can fill this up. Thread, now his ass corner's closed. <laughs> Sorry for uh, wasting time. But, let's see. Things I can talk about. Well, my friend, um, Fawnen came over when I was talking about uh, someone coming over. That was him. And as y'all saw, we've been doing console stuff. Which, that was fun. And he's just fun around to be around. I can't wait for him to come back. There's a ladybug out there. Yes. That's always fun. And... You know, I'm gonna point something out that's never been done before, but might have not been done before, but something I haven't never really pointed out. I have a, I have an allergy to Lush, like the um, bath, b b b b the, not vegan. I think it is vegan. Um, the soap place, the bath bombs place. Like I don't, I'm not allergic to their bath bombs, but I'm allergic to like all of their soaps and powders it's ridiculous like that's been something i've been having to deal with lately because i accidentally touched one so who fuck like my hands get really wrinkly and they peel constantly whenever they're they touch water it's just so it's it sucks also liquid hand soaps like i can't do liquid hand soaps anymore mm -mm. i have to have a even some bars of soap make my hands freak the fuck out. It's horrible. And I hate it. Blech. So that's, um... That's something you learned about me today. I have an allergic reaction to liquid soap and lush. But, uh... I was told by my doctor, and sometimes this just happens, that aller allergies come up. Like, I, was, I never was before. This just came up last year. That it just happens. So... Allergies are a thing. Um, what else to talk about? Oh, uh, thank y'all so much for, like, telling me that I'm pretty. Like, I'm, I'm really not trying to, like, get out for compliments. Like, it was literally legitimately surprising to me to see all those. Like, I know friends are a thing, but that's just friends. But having, like, so many other stuff is like, huh. Because, like, whoosh. Sorry, my hands. This side of my hair is just looking at, and this is just more. It's it's just funny to me. It's like naturally like this. I don't do anything to my hair. Stop it. Stop. There we go. Ha. Um. But yeah, like that's always a thing, and people are like, how can you say you're not pretty? Let me tell y'all a story, which can probably t not delve, uh, turn out to be a moral lesson that in growing up 
I told you before that I'm the failure of the family. Well, that's my fear. Um, I am the embarrassment of the family. And I never really was what my mom wanted me to be. My sister is taller and a lot more skinnier. She has a really skinnier metabolism compared to me. I got my dad's, so I am a lot larger. And my mom really hated that. And so no matter what I did, no matter what I could, I was always told I should diet and I did not look good in clothes. And like, when I started wearing dresses um, for the first time and for fucking ever, because they felt nice, and skirts, I was told the only reason why I wore those was because I wanted to hide my rolls and be less fat. And she said that was dumb. So, and a lot of friends can say that, yeah, that's, that's not good. That no matter what I did, it did not turn out very well. And my mom, for a time, um, when some horrible incidents happened to me, she was like, oh, everything makes sense now. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? She's like, oh, well, you're trying to make yourself unattractive so people won't look at you anymore, right? And it's like, that never came up. I never asked for any of that. And it's just, ugh. So legitimately hearing that people think I'm pretty, it's really weird to me, not because of me just fishing for compliments, but just, it's kind of rare to hear from myself. Golly, this is an emotional day. Well, again, it's a heart to heart, right? That's what this is meant for. So, um, right, lesson. This turning into a lesson of, um, people might say you don't look right, that you might look fat or ugly or too short, too tall, too large, too thin. But, seriously, sorry. Seriously, don't listen. Because, like, while you see yourself in the mirror and really hate yourself, everyone else who sees you might really love you. So, and, like, Dig tells me that the most, that they love every part of me. They love all the large parts, and they love the parts that I, even if I'm not socially acceptable, that they accept that, and if anything, they love me for it. So, yeah, your faults might be something that people might love you for. So, 10 out of 10, love yourself. Or try to. Try to love yourself. Because I also have depression. I've been clinically diagnosed since, like, college? Or high school? It was No, it was... No, it was college. Because it was after things I'm not going to talk about right now. But... Yes. So, it makes things difficult. Like, yeah, depression. It, make, it makes you see, see things that you shouldn't. Or you don't want to. Like... Because of it, and having to force myself into a horrible diet, I actually got, not diagnosed, I was never diagnosed with it, but um, I became anorexic for a while, and I got stopped before I really started to hurt myself. So, even if you want, like, wanting to change yourself for your flaws is fine. That's absolutely okay. You just need to maybe have help with it. Because what you might think is good for you might not be what it is like seeing other people is always good like seeing your friends or, or therapy i'm still trying to get myself to go find a therapist but for now having dig around helps so if you're wanting to do that yes and i guess the moral of the story here is um a love yourself b what you see in the mirrors might not what you think you see three consistency um other people might know what other people are able to see what you're not able even if you think you know and you see all of it from inside and out they might know better for those who don't can fuck i'm not doing a pr flip off on camera it's crazy um um people who see the little things fuck them it's only those who matter that really are able to, you know, have an actual opinion. Because they know what's good for you. Not always, though. 
Uh, that's a whole kettle of fish. You know what I'm saying, right? Because there's also abusive people who take advantage of you like that. Now that's happened to me, too. I've just had a whole lot of things bad happen to me. I'm sorry. This is a really heavy episode. I just wanted to get that stuff out there. Uh, <laughs> hopefully all these vlogs won't be as heavy. I think it's because I never actually had a chance to free speak before. So now I just am, and I've been going through some stuff lately that's just made me go... Yes. Yes. So yes. Uh, for that... Y'all know what I'm saying, right? Well, I hope so. Because I want to help. Like, I'm trying to help myself. It's hard. It's really fucking hard. Because all those reasons I listed before. And so if I can help you guys at all, that's what I'm doing. I hear a lot of people, like, um, people come to me saying, um, thanks for helping them get through depression and helping them get through anxiety. And that is literally the sweetest thing I've ever heard. Because <laughs> one of the things I've always had the philosophy of is, you know, the philosophy of do unto others what you want to do unto you. So that's what I basically do because no one else has ever treated me with such kindness when I was growing up. No one would ever be there to help me. No one would say nice things or give gifts or be there to make me laugh when I was really sad. So I want to do whatever it takes to be able Sorry, this is this is an emotional episode, but whatever. I get to talk to you guys finally. So to be able to give you guys something great to look forward to, to express your interests, to be shown that because you like this, because you like uh, nerdy things, doesn't mean you can't be creative or socially acceptable. It's fine. It's absolutely fine. And there is always sunshine there. There is always a silver lining. No matter what things throw at you, you can always get through it. Lordy knows I have tried to just back out of life, but no, here I am, living with the love of my life. Doing video games for a living. And that's okay. That's absolutely okay. Because through it all, somebody loves you. Even if it's just you loving yourself for a while, there is always someone or something out there to keep you going. Whether it be a project, like you throw years into, but you're just so passionate about, or literally someone being there, even if it's just way late into your life. Yeah, that happened. <laughs> Sorry. I started crying for a little bit, but... Yeah. This is just me being emotional. Let's bring Roma Tomato back. Look at this. Look at this little piece of shit. Oh, look at him go. There you go. Aha! <laughs> oh, it fell again. That's okay. So, um, I think I've talked enough for today. So I did asks. That's what I'm probably going to be doing. That um, I'm going to ask questions of whatever is in the comment box on that one. I'm going to answer those questions, or at least a good amount. Probably like 10 minutes worth of it, if not lower. And then uh, talk about what's up, which is good. And again, hopefully it won't be as, <laughs> it won't be as heavy as this. Hopefully not, goddamn. I guess I just got to find a topic to talk about each time. This one's about self-love. Yes. Let's go with that. That's the topic of self-love today, folks. Even if your self-love is just living for others. Because that's also valid. Yes. One day I'll show you guys other neat shit. Maybe I can introduce you guys to my stuffed animals. Because I have a lot of them. Someday I'll bring Dig on here, though. They're working. <laughs> yeah. So I think, again, that's about it, that I've talked as much as I can. But I'm going to do a thing of the advice for the day. Be careful of what you touch or what you eat. Because, like I said earlier, 
allergies can show up whenever the fuck it happens, and if something seems odd, even though you've been enjoying it for a long time, probably should look into it. Because, again, that happens, and you don't want to just be left into a f fucking situ situation where you have to shower with gloves on. I don't have to anymore, I had medication now, but <laughs> that's a thing. Always take care of yourself. Even if it means just uh, having to let go of things that now make you sick. Because cutting out toxic things in your life is good for you, whether it be physical But that's not the topic right now. Yes. So I think that's about it. So have a good day, everybody. Bye. I don't know what fucking emotion to... Ha. No. Mm, no. That's really cute. Bye.